Hi everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well today. My name is Gurkirat, and in today's video, I wanted to share the experience of organizing my manga collection with all of you. While my collection is usually fairly neat and tidy, I recently bought a lot of new volumes of manga, so I wanted to get them all on myself and sorted ASAP. Anyways, you guys can sit back, relax, and watch this video passively if you'd like, while you're cooking, cleaning, studying, or doing anything else essentially. I'll try my best to explain what I was doing, and my thought process behind why I did it that way, as it's shown throughout the video. Anyways, let's get right to organizing this manga. As you guys could probably already tell, my collection was in alphabetical order by a series title. I had thought about maybe changing it to being sorted by author's last name, but I ended up not going with that at the last minute because I just liked the way that I looked in alphabetical order already. So I thought, why change it when it already works the way I want it to? So what I was doing right here was I was just removing random items that I have on my shelves, such as plushies, pop figures, regular anime figures, and just random knickknacks. Things that just kind of would get in the way as I was trying to clean and remove the books and just like move them around and whatnot. So this is when I decided that I wanted to dust the shelves as well. I actually recently dusted them, so I only kind of did like a light dusting, did a quick one because recently I had cleaned my entire room and the thing is I have black bookshelves so the dust shows pretty quickly. That's one of the things that I actually envy about my sister's manga, well my manga, she mainly has novels but she has some manga as well. What she does is she has white shelves so then the dust shows way less. But I personally like the look of black shelves more, so I just kind of have to deal with the fact that dust will show up faster. But yeah, it didn't take very long to dust it. And actually the reason why I didn't vacuum or swiffer the floor right after was because my dog and my sister were sleeping in the room right next to mine, so I didn't want to wake them up at that time. These were just all the random things that I took off my shelves. The next thing that I decided to do was to remove the Claymore volumes that I have on the top two shelves, and that's because I wanted to put them back in the box set that they came in. And the reason for this is because I actually plan on selling them. I enjoyed reading Claymore back when I read it a few years back, but I don't really plan on rereading it anytime soon, or anytime at all probably. I didn't really enjoy it enough to reread it ever, and if I do decide to reread it, it's available on the Shonen Jump app and I could just read it on there because I have a subscription, so I don't really mind reading digital manga, especially for things that I don't really want to pay for it. And for Claymore, it's like, I enjoyed it, but I'd rather just have the money to be able to buy other manga that I'll probably enjoy more, or just other things at this time. Claymore does have a really nice box set though, and I'm kind of kind of regret selling it, selling this, because it's one of the nicer looking box sets that I've seen. The art on it is really great. Claymore is actually one of my friend's favorite series as well. I let him borrow the volumes because he wanted to read the manga after what happens in the anime. Because if you don't know, the Claymore anime actually has an anime original ending. And it only really shows the first half of what happened in the manga. So if you want to know what the quote unquote true ending is and what the manga kind of intended the ending to be, you have to read the manga and he just decided that it would be easier to do that than to read the scans online, so he asked me if he could borrow the volumes. And this is a friend that I've had for pretty much since the beginning of my childhood, so I didn't mind lending them to him, as I wanted to get him into a series that I enjoyed reading as well. And he actually did really enjoy reading it more than I did. Also, that was Miria, best girl in the series. Anyways, he, he enjoyed it quite a bit, and I actually might consider selling them to him if he asks, but for right now I'm probably just going to post them to Kijiji, which is essentially Canadian Craigslist, and I'll probably sell them at a later date because right now it's not really safe to go outside and <laughs> interact with strangers because we are technically in a lockdown in the province that I live in in Canada, so I'm probably going to wait it out 
and sell them after the holidays. Because of the space that was created by taking away the Claymore volumes from my shelves, I had to move the Death Note box set to the top shelf, and I actually wanted to flip it over because I like the way that the artwork looks on the other side of it, instead of just having it facing with the Death Note logo. So there was actually a layer of dust on the top, a thin layer, but it's still visible enough that I wanted to get rid of it because I don't want it to be dirty on my shelves. And it felt pr pretty perfectly. But the thing is, there was actually a tiny amount of space left in between the shelf. But that kind of is going to be left for if any more Berserk volumes ever come out because that series is technically still ongoing. The next thing that I wanted to do was to remove the Dragon Ball manga and the Dragon Ball Z manga from their box sets. And this is actually my most recent manga haul, and I made a video showcasing both manga box sets. And if you guys want to check out the showcase for both the Dragon Ball manga box set and the Dragon Ball Z manga box set, I'll have the video linked down in the description below. One thing that I really like about the Dragon Ball manga was the continuous spines, so I definitely didn't want to keep them in the box set because I want the manga to be on my shelves because the I think that the spine should be shown on a bookshelf and not just kept hidden in the boxes. And there it is, the final volume of Dragon Ball Z. After I removed the Dragon Ball manga and the Dragon Ball Z manga from their box sets, I had to actually make room to be able to fit them on my shelves because at the time I didn't have enough space on that shelf specifically if I wanted to keep them in alphabetical order. So I had to take away the Hunter x Hunter volumes that were on the shelf at the time. I ended up putting them back later obviously, but at that time I had to remove them. Also if you're wondering which bookshelves I have, they're from a Canadian retailer called JISC. They sell a lot of home goods and furniture, stuff like that. But personally I wouldn't actually recommend the shelves that I have as they're kind of prone to bending, as you can see by the right shelf that I have. It actually used to be my sister's bookshelf, but since she got new shelves recently, she gave me her old one which is a nice thing for her to do, but it was already kind of really bent because she had really heavy books on it. She has a lot of novels and hardcover, hardcover novels and whatnot. So they weigh a lot more than just regular manga volumes. So what they did was they ended up disforming the shelves quite a bit. And you can really tell by the bending of it because the one that's on the left of me is actually the one that I actually had for in the first place that I got a few years ago. And I've only ever kept manga on it and they're, they've never really bent. So if you're only going to keep manga on it, then it is a good buy, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're planning on putting heavier books on it. What I recommend, and what most people recommend in the manga and book community, is to get the IKEA Billy book cases. They make them in the size that my book shelves are in, and they also have like thinner ones that are about half the size of mine, and those ones are better for fitting in corners and whatnot. So this is me thinking about if it's actually in order, because sometimes I have manga out of place and the numbers aren't in the right order. So I wanted to make sure that it was correct. And now I'm just trying to fit in the Dragon Ball Super manga volumes that I have. I'm not cut up to date with this one. I have like the first five volumes. And I think that there's like ten out at this point. But I'm not planning on reading Dragon Ball Super anytime soon. And those are more so for my brother as well because he's more into Dragon Ball than I am. So now I had to make space for the Hunter x Hunter manga volumes. So I just had to remove everything that was on this side of the shelf as well. I was thinking really hard at this point because I wasn't sure if I was doing it correctly in the correct order of the volumes because I had put them in random places over my room and it was a hard time finding them in order so I was thinking really hard at this time.
As I'm finishing up putting away all the Hunter Hunter volumes, I had to make sure that there was actually enough space because I wanted to have new volumes if Togashi releases any new volumes anytime soon, which hopefully he comes off hiatus soon, but we'll never know until he actually does. And also I'm still missing a couple of volumes, so I need to make sure that I have space for those ones that are coming in. And this is me trying to make sure that I know the alphabet correctly. I need to know what comes after H, so I realized it was I before M, which is for Magi. But yeah, they ended up fitting pretty well, and I'm able to fit more volumes if I need be. Batman The Killing Joke is actually the only non-manga that I keep on my shelf, and I wanted to keep it there just because I really like it, and I recommend it even if you're not into American comic books. And this is what the bottom of my shelf looks like. It's just some exercise equipment and a whiteboard right next to my bookshelf. And this is what's actually on the bottom right corner of the shelf. It's just the anime and Blu-ray that I own. And this is what's on the top, an original Xbox, an old PS3, a coach bag that I never use, and an old build bear that I had from my childhood. So I actually had to make space for the box sets that I had taken off and taken the books out of. So the Claymore and the Dragon Ball box sets. So what I had to do was I removed the coach bag and I also removed the teddy bear. I ended up putting the teddy bear back after just on top of the PS3 console. But I had to make a room for the box sets, and that was my first priority. I realized that it wasn't going to be a perfect fit, but I just had to make it, make it work. And also, if you're wondering what the sunlight is like in my room, generally I keep this curtain closed because I don't want the sunlight to reach my manga as that's what causes yellowing. It was at this point that I realized that I was reaching the home stretch so I had decided to take a hydration break. Even though this is a plastic bottle, don't worry, I don't normally drink from plastic bottles and I recycled this one afterwards. So basically at this point all I really had left to do was to shift everything to the right more so I could fit the rest of the Moggy volumes correctly onto the shelves. This process took a long time because I had to shift pretty much every single volume to the right because I wasn't planning on removing or shifting anything else to different parts of the bookshelves because everything was already in alphabetical order. All I really had to do was move everything to the right. I ran into the same problem that I did with Moggy with the Hunter x Hunter volumes. I had placed them all over my room and I had a hard time figuring out, figuring out the order and making sure that they were in the correct order when I was putting them back on the shelf. I had to double check pretty much every single time. Moggy is actually one of my favorite Battle Shonen manga in general. I highly recommend it. You can watch the anime as well. but. The two seasons of the anime don't finish the story, and if you want to read, you're going to have to read the manga if you want to find out what the ending is after what happens in the anime, because I think that some of the best stuff in the manga happens right after where the anime left off. But the anime is pretty faithful to the manga, so if you want to just watch it instead, it's, I think it's still available on Canadian and American Netflix, but you could always just use a VPN if you want to. This manga also has some of the nicest covers, spines, and just in general aesthetic that I've seen in manga in general. It's one of my favorite looking series. And if you're wondering what I just placed on the shelf right now, it's actually the final chapter of Magi in the magazine that is in, in Japan. I ordered it from Japan and it took a few weeks to come in. I actually remember that I got hit by a duties charge. I didn't know what this was at the time because I paid like 5 or 10 bucks for the magazine itself but then I ended up having to pay like 30 bucks because there was a tax on top of it because I had imported it from Japan. Also this is me realizing that I placed the last three volumes of Monster on the shelf instead of the first three so I had to really quickly realize that I had placed them in the wrong order. 
But at this point, I was kind of flowing. Everything was going well. And I realized I would be able to put everything on the, on the shelves pretty fast and efficiently. I also really liked the way that it looked on my shelf at this point. Every single series that was really long running pretty much fit onto one shelf and it was all continuous. The reason I didn't like the way that my shelves looked before is because I would have a longer series like Moggy or Berserk or Hunter Hunter and they would kind of get split off and one would be on one shelf and the other half would be on the other shelf right next to it. So I didn't like the way that they split off like this and I just wanted them to be able to have be all be on one shelf. I wanted one long running series to all be on the same shelf, and I was able to accomplish this for the most part, with most of my series at least, after I reorganized it today. As you can tell, I was vibing to the music I was listening to. I'll have the playlist that I was listening to uh, linked down in the description. What I'm holding right now is a Rohan at the Louvre. If you guys don't know what that is, it's actually a story written by Hirohiko Araki when his art was featured at the Louvre and in France, the art museum. His art for Jojo was featured there a while back and he created uh, Rohan at the Louvre as a sort of art book. But also it is a manga and it's in full color. I recommend getting it if you're a big Jojo fan and a big Jojo Part 4 fan as it's something interesting to have in your collection especially if you're into Jojo, of course. And we're vibing once again. Right now, I'm just putting away the Yotsuba volumes. Yotsuba is a slice of life manga about a little girl and her father and her friends and family in her neighborhood and town in Japan. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a slice of life manga that's just a feel good story. We're kind of in tough times right now in the world and I think that type of story is something that everyone kind of needs to read every once in a while. It's also just in general one of my favorite manga. And it's one of the manga that got me into collecting manga because at first I would only really buy some manga like random Magi volumes and I had one or two Yotsuba volumes, but I decided one day, like, I just want to get all of this. So then I went to the bookstore and I paid retail price for pretty much all the volumes, which I don't really recommend doing that because it's a Yen Press series. So they're kind of known for having a higher MSRP, a higher cover price. And that's generally what the bookstore charges unless they're having some sort of sale. And I ended up paying like a hundred bucks for like less than, it was like eight or nine volumes. And I, I realized I was kind of a mistake at the time because I was like a broke high schooler, but I really wanted to own the complete series, which Yotsuba isn't complete, but it is caught up. It was caught up at the time. And there's only been like two or three new volumes since I got caught up at that time a few years back. And there we have it. Pretty much everything's on the shelf now. Here's what it looks like, a closer look at the shelf that I just organized. And then once again, there's space for new volumes in case I get them for a certain series. At this point, the only thing that I really had left to do was to place the things that I'd taken off initially back onto the shelves in their proper places. Just the plushies, the figures, and the keychains that I have. These are two of the cooler keychains that I own. Everything kind of had its place, and yes, I do realize that the Yu-Gi-Oh! is Exile volumes have fallen over. I ended up putting Elmine, the Elmine plushie that I had right next to it as a book stopper. Overall, I was really happy with the way things had turned out. I like the way that the manga was placed way more now, because the longer running series were all together instead of split off on the two separate selves. They were all kind of on their own shelf, and they had their own space. And I also had enough space at the end of the shelves for new volumes that, for series that are still continuing, such as Hunter x Hunter and Berserk. Even if those series probably won't ever end, I'm just happy that I have the space for new volumes in case they do come out. And I still have a lot of room in my shelf in general because I have two bottom shelves where I can fit at least 100 to 200 volumes more if I need be. 
Anyways guys, if you guys enjoyed watching this video then please leave a like and subscribe as then you'll be notified when I post new content. This has been Gurkirat and I really want to thank you guys for watching and I hope that you all have a wonderful day.